I'm Alona from Jatsa Together and we are in Kherson. We finally arrived to Kherson. The city itself doesn't have much to offer, although the region has lots of places to visit. We are going to see the binary of Prince Trubetsky, Jarelhach Island, Kayaking on the River, Kherson Mountains, Ascania Nova, and at the end, we are going to go to Arabatska Strilka to see the famous Pink Lake. Right now, we are on the way to Prince Trubitsko Winery. This is actually the only proper wine chateau in the entire country. And I thought it will be a fun thing to show you where the best wines in Ukraine are made. From Kherson, you can reach the winery by public transportation. But for our convenience, we hired a private driver for the afternoon. If you want to have a romantic getaway, you can always stay at the hotel on the property. And in this case, they do offer transportation from Kherson. So right now we are at Chateau Trubetsky and we are about to have a premium tour, which costs 900 hrenia per person. However, if your group is big and has more than six people, the price will go down to 700 hrenia per person. The tour includes six vintage wines, different types of cheese, nuts, and other nibbles. So let's go and see. Our tour guide begins by explaining the history of the chateau. Prince Trubetsky was a prince of four different European royal families and decided to become a winemaker in the 1890s. He brought over a French architect to build his chateau and French vineyards with their wines. And the chateau officially opened in 1896. the history of the chateau. We also learned that during World War II, the Nazis used Trubetsky Chateau as a base while they were attacking the Soviet Union, and there are no vintages left from before the 1950s. Apparently, they drank the whole cellar. In 1900, Trubetsky Wines won the Grand Prix in Paris, although it should be noted that his cousin was on the committee. This award catapulted his recognition and caused the replacement of French wine with the Russian aristocracy. Our guide is also an accomplished sommelier who links us through six different wines made by the Chateau. She explains how to observe the color 
aroma and taste of each wine. The cheeses are a French brie and a farm cheese made on site. And I should mention that the local honey is amazing. Overall, I think this was a great thing to do in Kherson, and I definitely bought a bottle to drink later in the episode. Right now we are at the bus station in Kherson, and we are going to take a bus to Skadovsk, a port city, which has a ferry that will take us to Jarl Hajj, an inhabited island, where we're going to stay overnight. This trip we decided to do entirely by public transportation. You can buy a ticket inside the bus station. And it costs 106 Remya one way. The ride to Skadovsk takes around 2 hours. In the past, Jarlaj was a speed that the ancient Greeks called the course of Achilles. Although very skinny, its length of 42 kilometers makes it the largest island in the Black Sea. The bus driver will drop you off just a few blocks away from the beach. You'll have to make your way to the pier to buy the ferry tickets. So we just got to Skadovsk and we have an hour before our ferry leaves. We bought our tickets right on the beach at the pier. The ticket costs 200 round trip per person. Make sure you show up to the pier 15 minutes before the boat is supposed to depart. There is plenty of seating in the boat, but I recommend heading straight to the top where you'll get the best views. The pier on Jural Hajj is located right next to the cafe, where staff will show you to your tent if you pre-booked. If you bring your own tent, you can pretty much set it up anywhere on the island. We are finally at Jural Hajj, and because I booked a tent two days ago, we didn't need to carry uh, one ourselves. The specialty of this island is stingray, so I got myself a hot grilled stingray for a snack. The water around Jaril Hajj is very clear and it's common to see dolphins playing around near the shore. The sand is white and soft, although there are many shells strewn about. The best place to catch the sunset is by the famous Jaril Hajj lighthouse. There are actually two of them, the original red one and the newer white one. To get there, just walk west along the beach, about 10 minutes from the cafe. If you don't want to carry your own food, the cafe is open well into the night. As is tradition, I ordered their steamed soup, which is actually very good. It goes wonderfully with the cold draft beer and the sound of the waves. So we are camping at Gerald Hodge and it's time to go to bed. Good night, see you tomorrow. The island has many salt lakes and even one fresh spring. If you want to go exploring, the whole island is a national park, so you can go anywhere you want. Just be careful, as there are 
are wild animals like wild boars and mouflon. This morning we are going kayaking and for this we are going to take a boat on the Dnipro to a beautiful location. Out of all the places we went in Kherson, this one was definitely the most convenient. Just a 5 minute boat ride from the city takes you to some wetlands that are popular with boaters and kayakers. This activity cost only 200 renya for the morning and it is guided by a member of the Kherson River Club. The club has single and double kayaks, and I have to say, this is a very fun workout for a couple. Overall, we found this activity a pretty good way to spend our Saturday morning. Back in another van, we are going to watch the sunset at the famous Kherson Cliffs. This geological formation is an hour's drive from Kherson city and a very unique place in Ukraine. We booked the excursion through a tour company and it cost 450 hryvnia per person. The cliffs overlook the Dniprovska Gulf in the Black Sea. Because of the 1997 German film Knocking on Heaven's Door, one of the traditions for visitors to the cliffs is to drink tequila while watching the sunset. Another thing people do is to write a wish on a piece of paper and place it into a shell, then throw it into the sea. If the shell reaches the water, your wish will come true. Today we are going to Scania Nova to have a safari. This is the place that makes me want to come to Kherson in the first place. Right now it's 6.30 and we are at the meeting point at the cafe and about to get on the bus. The drive to Scania Nova takes around two hours. During the ride, our guide explains all about the history of the park. The land was bought by Frederick Volksfein, a German settler, and turned into a nature reserve in 1898. The Biosphere Reserve is located in the Torida Steppe and has animals, both native and non-native, to Ukraine. The total area of the reserve is 825 square kilometers, or 318 square miles. As far as animals go, the most important in the biosphere is Przewalski's horse, the last remaining species of wild horse in the world. There is even a small population living in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. These are horses Przewalski and we just feed them, gave them carrots, 
um, you're supposed to put food on the palm that way that they will not bite your fingers because their teeth are really strong. Um, there are a few of them, different colors. Um, my favorite is the brown one, I guess it's the classic one. <laughs> yeah. Um, they they small but they still dangerous and you should wash your feet so they will not step on them or yeah will not bite you don't go behind them don't uh, if you drop something don't pick it up they will pick it up uh, your life is more important <laughs> yeah and in general they're really cute and really um, soft and um, amazing animals but still dangerous still wild animals these are zebras that we have in Ascania Noah they are outside uh, just in a good weather usually summer and uh, then they are taken inside inside buildings uh, where they spending their winter and um, cold autumn because as you know they are from Africa and we don't have the same weather um, here you can see a small uh, zebra a baby zebra <laughs> yeah um, you're not supposed to feed them and you're not supposed to come close to them they uh, can be aggressive um, there are quite few of them for Ukraine I think really cute really beautiful ah! These are donkeys, really cute and really smart. Our cameraman loves donkeys. While we were traveling in the train, they were running after us. They probably used to people feeding them carrots. Look how cute it is. Other freely roaming animals include American bison, ostriches, Turkmenian kulan, wildebeest, ibex, and more. So right now we are at the Pink Lake and we are trying to get over there somewhere in the middle where the color is more pink. I think it's salt, so we, got, we are going to check it. Uh, to get there we need to, <laughs> we need to actually go into the mud with our bare feet. So, shoes off and let's start. So we are at Hinichesk Lake. This is actually the pink lake, natural pink lake, and it's amazing. It's so beautiful. It just takes your breath away. Uh, we actually came from that side where a lot of people who collecting salt with their buckets and taking picture. But the thing is, it's not pink, it's white. You can see the white layer of salt over. There are no water and it's not really pinkish. And I don't know what is that, laziness or just giving up, <laughs> but they're not coming to the middle of the lake where it's actually Barbie pink color. So if you're coming here, you absolutely need to go to the middle of the lake where all these pillars covered with the white salt and it's reflecting on the, uh, on the pink water. It's, it's fantastic. Hinichevsk Lake is located on Arabatska Strilka, which is Kherson region. And we got here yesterday by bus. It took us about six hours. It wasn't pleasant, but this lake worth it. It's worth the whole trip to Kherson. I'm telling you, that's 
this beautiful, amazing place. And I'm so excited to be here and so excited to see how the photos came out. We've reached the end of our Kherson trip. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like and subscribe so you will be updated when new episodes are released.